Hey everyone, it's M3R Seriously, and welcome to another episode of Manga Collecting 101. So today I thought I would go through how to prepare, or how to plan what manga you're buying um, each month. So I am a very organized person, and this is probably like over the top to what a lot of other people do. But I just thought um, this might be useful to give you some kind of tips on how to be organized. And it also helps how to plan um, financially too, um, like of what manga you're going to buy each month. So yeah, I thought I'd just go through kind of how I keep track of manga that I'm going to buy, how I keep track of uh, manga that I'm still interested in, and yeah, like release dates and stuff. So as you can see, we're looking at my iPhone at the moment, which is where I kind of keep track of everything um, in regards to my manga, and I keep them all in notes. So we'll open this up. And here is what you see, well this is my setup for um, my manga collection. So I guess I'm just going to go through the different sections and hopefully you'll get some ideas of like how to organize it yourself or how to keep track of things. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm a really organized person so this is like over the top organization. You know, there might be some valuable things that could be useful for new manga collectors. Alright, so first up, as you can see, I have this month. So this is all the manga that I've purchased over the past month. So that would be for November. And as you can see, I've got Scum of Witch Volume 5, Girl from the Other Side Volume 3, To Your Eternity Volume 1, Berserk 7, 9, and 10, Kakiguru uh, 3, Your Name, uh, My Academia, Honey So Sweet, Welcome to the Ballroom, and Lost World. So this is everything that I've purchased over the past month. And it also helps me know what I've brought so when I go to like record a haul um, like I already know what's there so then we scroll down and we go to next month so this is all the manga that I'm planning on buying next month um, you know so we have the promised Neverland volume 1, Attack on Titan, Haikyuu, Smoking Parade, um, all these other things so what I usually do is that I would put all the continuing series because that's my priority when buying manga is to keep up to date with continuing series because once you're behind on them it just becomes so overwhelming trying to catch up and when you want to buy a new manga and stuff like that. So yeah, straight up on my list of what I'm going to buy it's all new releases pretty much and like other series that I'm going to start continuing for example um, in December The Promised Neverland and The Children of Wales um, are going to be released and that's going to be a new series that I'm going to continue picking up and I also have down the bottom one week friends because I'm not sure if I want to start that I am still up in the air so that I just put that at the bottom just kind of as a reminder if I want to go back and have a look at it so after I kind of compile my new releases of what's coming out that month I can see that next month for December it's going to be a pretty big month for releases um, by doing this I can see if there's only going to be a couple new releases and that's when I'll add in some um, extra series that I want to start or buy. Usually I'll try and add in some one shots um, but for December there's quite a few new releases that I don't think that I'll add any more to that. The only one that I might add is maybe a couple more volumes of Berserk. It also depends on the total that this comes to and you know how much money I have for December so it takes in to consideration a lot of different things so that's the next month so that's everything I'm going to purchase for December let me scroll down to my section for release dates so as you can see I have a raised and blade of the immortal at the top now these are two series that have new volumes out that have been released I just haven't had enough money to be able to purchase them so they're there as a reminder for when I get time and money um, I'll go back and buy them first let me scroll down even further and this is basically all of my continuing series that I am picking up at the moment. So, you know, I have a lot of continuing series, which is why I like to have it organized. I like to know, you know, what, what the next volume is, when it's coming out. And, you know, it gives me the opportunity to look at how many new releases are coming out that month. And then I can plan other series that I'm going to, you know, add to the list. So as you can see here, I have it organized by month that it's coming out. So when we get to January, I can just go and copy all the January manga and put it straight into my like um, next month type thing. So I have the Children of the Whales Volume 2, 
um, Kakaguru Volume 4, Dreaming Sun 5, and Welcome to the Ballroom Volume 9. So them four I already know are going to be coming out in January. So they're all my continuing series and that means that there's not a whole lot of new releases so I can actually put in different manga that I want to buy. Um, you know, based on how much money and stuff like that. So then you can see that I go down each month. So I put all the February manga together. So we've got Scum's Wish, uh, The Ancient Mag's Bride, Crocus Basketball, My Academia, uh, Sasquatch Classroom, Voices of a Distant Star, Promise Neverland, Tokyo Ghoul, and To Your Eternity. So you can see that this February is going to be a fairly big month for new releases. And that means that I can plan ahead and buy a bit more different manga in January because there's not as many new releases then in February why I won't be able to pick up as many. So yeah, it just gives you kind of the idea of what the next few months looks like as in new releases and then you can plan other manga that you want to fill in the gaps if you can afford it type thing. Um, so yeah, we got like March, April and May and then June. I don't, we have to wait till June for the next villain saga that I hate seeing that. And then we go down even further, and this is all the next volumes that I just haven't found new release dates yet. But like these are manga that are going to be coming out after this. And yeah, I just haven't gone through and found the release dates because some of them haven't been announced yet. So yeah, that's kind of my release dates. That's how I organize them. Obviously everyone organizes them differently, but I feel like this works really well for me. Um, you know, just so I can go through and you know, I can look at March and I can be like, all right, so there's only three new releases coming out at the moment. That's when I can prioritize and, you know, maybe start picking up a new series or some more Berserk, you know, some more Slam Dunk. So you can kind of just see and plan ahead as to what you're going to buy. But remember, it always, it all depends on like your financial situation and that, um, you know, for example, if I get to January and I don't have enough money to buy a lot of manga, then I might only add like maybe two um, one shots to that month and only have like six manga. You know, it really just varies, it depends, and just, yeah, you just go in there and kind of check what um, you can afford. Um, and the next section I have is anticipated series to collect. So this is just where I put all the different series that I have an interest in that I want to pick up. So there's quite a few. <laughs> um, now this doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to pick up all of these. It's just manga that if I don't have many releases for this month, so many like new releases, then I can go down and add, you know, maybe one of these in. So I could pick up like another, which is a one volume series, or I could start um, 10 count, you know. It just gives me the opportunity to go down and scroll down and have a list of manga that you know, I have an interest in and I might want to pick up, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to go pick them up. So what I also do is that you can see next to she and her cat at the top is that I have a one there. Now that means how many volumes are in the series. So I haven't done this for all of these. I just put it in whenever I figure it out. Um, so yeah, as you can see in Close Called Fat, there's a volume one. Um, My Love Story, 13 volumes. So I can go down here and if like I want a one shot, then I can just look for the one. But if I want to start like a brand new series that has quite a lot, you know, I can go down to like Cross Games, which has eight. That's just something that I do, just so when I'm scrolling through, I find it a bit easier. And I also have um, this TP next to it, which you can see for In the Corner of the World, Horimiya. So that uh, means top priority. So that, so these are the manga with the TP next to it, a manga that I want to pick up first or that I have the most interest in and they're kind of my priority. Um, so some of them I have, yeah, In the Corner of the World, Horimiya, Attack on Titan, No Regrets, uh, Ten Count, we got Real, My Love Story, Triton of the Sea, Master Keaton, The Bride Story, Paradise Kiss, uh, Azamanga Dayo, Jinji Ito's Cat Diary, Opus, Cross Games, Livingstone, and yeah, so they're all like manga that I would want to buy first. Yeah, this is just like really helpful just to kind of keep track of different manga that I've seen over the, you know, past couple of months that I'm interested in. And, you know, if I want to start picking them up, then I can just look down here. 
but yeah that's pretty much how I set out my like kind of manga um, like buying and planning type thing and at the bottom I also do have drop series which is high school life Fudanshi so I know not to go and start picking it up again um, the reason I dropped that one is just because I decided to watch the anime instead and I want to spend the money on different manga but yeah that is kind of my whole setup of how I plan my manga buying um, every month so I like to plan two months in ahead just because I can I don't know I just do it because I can just plan it a bit better and I like knowing kind of what I'm going to be buying and how much I'm going to be spending so the month before I can plan ahead type thing but yeah this is just how I do it like I said this is probably like way in depth than a lot of other people but you might be able to get a couple of hints on how to you know maybe organize how you buy things like you know you could um start creating a list of series that you want to collect so you don't forget about them because I know that that's happened quite a few to me quite a few times like I want to buy something but then I actually forget what the series was because there's just so much manga out there um, or you know you might want to start planning your release dates um, you know seeing when things are coming out so you know when they're coming out and when you're going to be buying them because it is really good if you have large collections to keep track of everything that you're buying um, especially if you have like as many continuing like series as me you know you get quite confused and you don't know what you're buying and when things coming out but even for like smaller collectors or new collectors it's just really helpful to keep track of what you're buying and it also helps you keep track of you know how much you're spending too you know you can't go and spend you know five hundred dollars a manga each month you know, so it's good to just keep track of this and then you can go through and see how much you're planning on spending and you can start budgeting that for, you know, a month in advance, which will help you financially. So yeah, I like to keep mine all in notes or some kind of digital thing. You can have it on your computer or whatever. Um, I have tried writing it down on like paper and stuff and I know some people do that, but I just find it kind of annoying. You know, if I want to, you know, take away manga or add manga, it's... I don't know, it's not neat or easy. So I like to keep it on notes. It's on my phone and you know I can access it whenever. So like whenever I plan to buy my like haul for the month, I just go to my notes, I can already see what I'm going to buy, put it all in and then just buy it straight away. It just makes it a lot easier and you know if I want to take away manga from that, it's still you know quite organized. But yeah, you can do it whichever way you want, whatever suits you. Yeah, that is kind of my setup for um, how I plan to buy manga and stuff. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, um, that'd be great. Let me know what you're going to do or how you plan your manga. That'd be really interesting to hear in the comments because I know everyone's different, but no one really talks about how they're going to, how they plan their manga or if they do. So I just thought it's an interesting topic to kind of talk about and bring up. And yeah, hopefully you got some ideas from this and it was helpful to a couple of you out there. You know, whether you're new to manga or you have been collecting for years. So yeah, that is it for me, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, leave a like so I know that you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next video.